Oi, pessoal, tudo bem? Welcome to this Q&A. I'm very excited to be here with you today. So, who is here? Oi, Jacob, tudo bom? Ana, Bossa Nova, tudo bom? Yeniri, tudo bom? Margus. So good to see all of you here, Manfred. Tudo bom, Joe, Alberto. Yay, welcome, guys. Let me know if you can see me and hear me well. I'm using new equipment, so I want to make sure that everything is working well. If you're new to my channel, I want you to know that I teach this class once a month. It's a Q&A, so I'm here available to answer your questions. And if you have time, we can review some of the content that I covered in my la latest videos. Uh, so I publish a new video every Tuesday on my YouTube channel. I've done that for the last three and a half years. And once a month, I meet you here too, so we can spend time together and also to answer your questions and help you with your Portuguese. Okay, so I can see your feedback that you can uh, that you can see me and hear me well, that's amazing. Okay, so to ask questions, just go in the chat and I'll do my best to answer your questions. If I don't see your question, you can just copy and paste again because sometimes it is hard for me to read all your comments, okay? Uh, before we start, I want to tell you that if you want to support my channel, please click like, like this video, share this video and my channel with your friends. Also, you can join the YouTube club, which is a program that I created to share with you the transcripts of my video, the texts, and also I organize all my videos in the order that I recommend that you watch them. To join the YouTube club, just go to my website, speakingbrazilian.com. And you can also donate during this class, so just go in the live chat and there is a button to make a donation. So it's totally up to you. If you want to support my channel, I really appreciate everything that you do for me. Uh, and what else I wanted to tell you? Oh, I also offer, if you're new to this channel and, and you don't know my material yet, I offer a lot of free resources. You find a list of free resources in the description of this video, okay? So let's get started. I'm going to read your comments and see how, how, what questions you have. Uh, okay, so Margot is mentioning, so we are changing the time zones. Um, we're changing the clock this um, Saturday, I guess, right? I think. I just wish that all the countries changed the clock at the same day. Wouldn't that be much easier? <laughs> okay, so I have a question from Jacob. So I want to ask about pronouncing the letter I, L, in the words auto or autura. Do you pronounce the L like in English or like the W? So yes. So in this case, we also pronounce the letter L as um, a W sound. Uh, so, to, so you know how to pronounce the letter L, just remember that the letter L does not sound like an L in Brazil when it is placed at the end of syllables. Uh, which means if there is no vowel right after it, it is not it is not pronounced as an L. Okay, so all these examples that you gave, they're very good examples. Brazil, so we don't have a vowel right after the L, so it is not pronounced as an L, it's pronounced as a, a weak U sound. Brazil, Brazil. Same thing with the words alto. We don't say alto. No, there is no L sound in this word, auto. So it's the same pronunciation as the word auto written with the letter U, um, uh, U, uh, A-U-T-O, same pronunciation as A-L-T-O. You know what word you're using by the context, right? So auto and altura. Altura. This is the most common pronunciation in Brazil, but of course, as you know, we have many accents in Brazil, so maybe some people pronounce the L. I don't know. I, I would say that most Brazilians do not pronounce the L in these words. So remember, at the end of syllables, if there is no vowel right after the L, the L has no L sound, it's, it is pronounced as U. U. Very good question, Jacob. Muito bom. Okay, so many questions, guys. I'm going to do my best to answer your questions. So, Joe is asking, estou tendo dificuldades em ouvir falantes nativos 
ouvi suas técnicas em vídeos anteriores, mas você tem atualizações de diferentes técnicas. Hmm. I don't think I have anything new to tell you though about how to improve your listening. There is, unfortunately, there is no secret here. The more you listen to Brazilians, the more you will get used to the different accents and pronunciations. So you really have to listen a lot. I recommend you do a lot of uh, listening exercises, listen to podcasts, watch videos, but then try, if you watch videos with subtitles, try to connect the words with the sounds to train your hear to understand the sounds. And I think that's it. There is no, nothing else. Um, you have to listen a lot. And you have to listen to different people because, for instance, if you just watch my videos, you get used to my way of speaking and my accent, and, and I speak at a very much lower pace than most Brazilians because I'm a teacher, and I also uh, articulate, you know, I pronounce all the words very clearly, but most Brazilians don't do that. That is why it's so hard to understand native speakers and also uh, most Brazilians do a lot of reductions and linking words so that makes the language more harder to understand but I think that the best thing to do is really to listen listen a lot and try to connect if you watch videos with subtitles try to connect the sounds with the words that you help you understand oh you see oh I see that he made a reduction here so instead of saying você most of the time we just say Say, I think that understanding the reductions of words that we make in Brazilian Portuguese will also help you understand Brazilians better. I hope that's helpful, though. Okay, what else? What else? Look, reading your comments. Oh, that's a fun question, Mary. I'm not sure how to translate these words into English. Uh, eita, oba, oba is like is more like yay. It's something good when you say. Oba, you're happy, something good happened, you had like some good news. Eita is usually the opposite. So eita usually is not something positive, something negative, but it has not too negative, not too bad, but it's like eita, something happened, uh, something is not working, you're late. I don't know, you can use in so many different contexts. So I would be, I would say that eita is kind of the opposite of Oba. So Oba means yay. And Eita, I don't know how to translate that into English because these are these are not actually words that have meanings, they're just interjections. Uh, so let me help me hear people, everybody, how would you translate these two words into English? What do you think? If you speak both languages well, how would you translate Eita into English, like something equivalent? I know that Oba to me sounds like yay. Let me know. Okay, reading your comments. Question from Menino Souza. Do they pronounce the letter V like Spanish anywhere in Brazil? Maybe. Hmm. And it really depends also on the what Spanish, right? Because there are so many different accents in, in Spanish. But in Argentina, they usually very commonly pronounce the letter V and B the same way. And in Brazil, we don't do that, but maybe in the cities that are closest to our neighbors, right, to Argentina and also the other uh, Spanish-speaking countries. So probably those regions, we have a similar accent because they are very, very close to Spanish speakers. So maybe in those regions. Um, but I, other than that, I think Brazilians, they make a clear distinction between the letters V and B. Although there are some words, words in Brazil that we, we have both variations. And I think we got that from Spanish. Let me give you an example. Um, like the verb varre, varre means to sweep, like when you're cleaning the house. But a lot of, I've heard people saying varrer. I think this is just a variation. We have the word bravo with the letter V. And a lot of people say brabo with the letter B instead of bravo. So we have some words that have these two variations with V and B. Uh, and I think we got that from our neighbors, our, our Spanish speakers. Very good question. 
So Steve is asking how long to speak Portuguese perfectly. There is no right answer to this question because it really depends on each person. It depends um, what is your background, how, how many, what other languages do you speak, how many hours are you going to study every week. And so many, so many variables. I made a video about this and I give a lot of um, details about that. I recommend you watch this video, find it on my YouTube channel. Uh, it is How Long Does It Take to Learn Portuguese? I think that's the title of the video. But basically, generally speaking, I would say that takes about six months to start speaking Portuguese, you know, to be able to understand a little bit and communicate a little bit. You're not fluent yet. I would say that takes at least two years, two to four years to become fluent. And as I said many times before, lang foreign languages is, um, you need to study that language forever because if you stop studying, you can just forget. Um, so it takes, you really have to study uh, for a long, long time to really assimilate the language. But I would say six months to start speaking and communicating, about two to four years to really be able to have a fluency level. But as I said, that depends. It really depends on each person. Some um, students learn faster because they speak French and Spanish and Italian, then just learning Portuguese just gets much easier. Uh, but if, if this is the first language that you're learning, it will take longer, longer, because you have to learn everything from scratch. Okay, I hope that helps. Muito bom, que mais? Reading your comments. Oh, so this is a very good tip from miscellaneous. <laughs> so if you're watching videos in Portuguese, I recommend, yeah, that's a very good tip. You slow it down. If you think the video is too fast and you cannot understand it, you can just slow it down. You know that YouTube allows you to slow down the video. Uh, so I recommend you do that. But of course, first try to, to see if you can follow the video with it at a normal pace and then try to slow down a little bit and maybe a little bit more if you need it but that's a very good tip with the bone hmm bossa nova so question about words that mean close by nearby in portuguese when to use the right one let me see we use the word perto perto means close uh, what other words are you thinking, Bossa Nova? Let me know. I don't remember. I think the word perto is the word that they really use to talk about something that is close to you. But we do have other ways of talking about that. Let me think. Um, you could say, for instance, por aquí means around here. Por aquí, two words. Por aquí means around here. Uh, but the word close is the word perto. And we usually use the word perto with the preposition G. Uh, for instance, if you want to say, is that, um, is that a restaurant close by? You could say, tem um restaurante perto daqui. Like close from here would be the little translation. Close by. Uh, so perto plus the preposition G and then you add the other word at the end. Let me know if you can think of other words so I can try to explain the difference, but the word perto is the most common one used to talk about something that is close to you or something else. With the bone. Oh, okay, so this will be the translation of the word eita. Eita, yeah, oh no, I like that, it, it makes sense. Golly, I never used this word, the golly. <laughs> Thank you, Damian. Muito bom. Okay. Looking for more questions. Uh, this is a very good question, Yazi, because it changes depending on the, on the accent. So the letter R in Portuguese, I think it's one of the letters that changes the most based on the accent. Uh, so it has... Some things are very uh, similar and it doesn't matter, it doesn't change uh, depending on the accent. For instance, the letter R at the beginning of words, most of the time sounds like ha, sounds like a, the American H. But when you have the letter R between, at the middle, between a vowel and a consonant, 
it ha it can have at least three different pronunciations. It can sound like the H, porque, porque, porque. It could sound like the flap T in American English, which is the fricative R, por, porque, porque, porque. And it could also sound like the American R, por, porque, porque, porque. The three pronunciations are correct. There is no right or wrong. Because in this position, they are at the end of words and at the end of syllables, which is this case, porque, we have two syllables here, and the R is at the end of syllable. I know it's hard to think about separating syllables, so just remember if the R is between a vowel and a consonant. It, it can have many variations of pronunciation, so I recommend you just choose the one that's easiest for you, uh, and, uh, or just imitate your friends. But at the beginning of words, it is important to make the correct, the most common pronunciation, which is the H sound, like hatu, hatu, hueu, a roupa do rei de Roma. <laughs> so I gave you like a tongue twister here using the letter R. Uh, and also when you find the letter R between two vowels, it has to be pronounced as the fricative R. It has to be R, like amarelo. Amarelo means yellow. You have amarelo, so the letter R is between the letter A and E, it has to have this sound, okay? But when you find the letter R between a vowel and a consonant, it can have different variations. I know that's complicated, you get this with, with practice. Oh, that's amazing! So your girlfriend... Ah, okay... She's learning Portuguese. That's amazing, Lucas. Você é brasileiro. <laughs> you know that most most of my students, I think the biggest reason uh, people learn Portuguese is because of a boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse. Um, is the number one reason why people learn Portuguese. Isn't that interesting? Oh, this is a very personal choice, uh, Kaiser. European Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese whatever you like the most. Uh, and also, do you have a reason to learn Portuguese? Are you learning Portuguese because you want to travel to Portugal or Brazil? Then you could make maybe make the choice based on that. Or does any of the, of the variations sound nicer to you? Do you have a preference? Do you have friends in Brazil or in Portugal? So I would ask you, like ask yourself these questions to make this decision because there is no really better version. Um, it's really a matter of preference. Pacas. I haven't heard of this word in such a long time. Pacas. Pacas means a lot. I think there are no other meanings for this word. So if you say, eu gosto dela pacas, it means I like her a lot. This is very informal, okay? It's a, it's a gíria, it's a slang. Uh, and that's the only meaning that I know of this word. Many, may, maybe there are other meanings because, you know, when we use words in informal language, sometimes they have different meanings. But yeah, it means a lot. It means muito. Hmm. But I think we place it at the end, of, after the word, not before. Good question, Damien. Hey, James, bem-vindo. So, so many questions. I'm just reading the ones that I see. If I, if I have not answered your question, you can copy and paste. Um, let me see this question. Do Brazilians tend to use the possessive adjectives meu, seu, without the definite article? So, the definite article before this uh, possessive pronouns, it is optional. So, you can use it or not. There is no right or wrong in this case. They both are correct. Both ways are correct according to the standard norm. So you can say mm, a minha casa or minha casa. You can say este é o meu amigo. Este é meu amigo. So the use of definite articles is completely optional before these little pronouns, possessive pronouns, okay? This is a regional thing. I think that some regions in Brazil, they use more articles than in other regions. For instance, in Sao Paulo and Rio, it's really, really common to use the article. 
the de definite article before names of people, for instance, like a Maria Chego instead of Maria Chego. So the use of articles before names, like people's names, is also optional. And this is a regional thing, like in the north, some areas in the northeast, they don't use it. And so Paulo use it, we use it a lot. So it's a regional thing, there is no difference in the meaning, and there is no right or wrong, both ways are correct. Tá bem? Muito bom. Mm -mm. So Phil is asking for suggestions of um, materials to practice listening. I would love to hear from the audience, audience, what do you use to practice listening Portuguese? So Phil, read the comments to see what other people are suggesting. Suggesting, I recommend, I do have my podcast, which is 100% in Portuguese, and I speak very clearly, so you, maybe you could start there. It's called Speaking Brazilian Podcast. I also really like the podcast called um, Café Brasil. You can find the transcript, transcript of the text on their website. I also really like a pod podcast that I found recently called uh, Brasileiros pelo mundo. So it's a, it's about Brazilians that live in different countries. So all this, I think podcasts is, are really good tools to, to practice listening. And also YouTube videos, of course. And take a look at the other suggestions from the audience. Uh, okay, so Luis, I think Luis is Brasileiro. Tudo bem, Luis? <laughs> so here's a question about English. Okay, this class is for Portuguese learners, but tudo bem. Uh, this works for everyone. It's always easier to understand than to speak. Always. Because it is easier to, to, to receive uh, uh, information than to give information. This is completely normal. Don't feel bad about that. It is completely normal, but if you can't understand, that is already a huge step. So it's amazing. Congratulations if you can't understand what I'm saying right now and you're Brazilian. That's amazing. You can have a very good understanding of English. Uh, now you just have to practice to, to be able to speak. You just have to practice. I recommend that you practice if you don't have anyone to practice with. I recommend that you practice by yourself. I recommend you write short texts because I know it's hard to create a conversation in your head uh, if, you're not, if you don't have practice. So sit down and write it and then practice out loud and then try to practice without reading. If you do that regularly, you see that it gets easier to really speak when you have the chance to speak with a native speaker. So that works for Portuguese in any language, people. If you're listening to this, you want to improve your conversational skills, you find it hard to speak, it's just practice. So you don't have necessarily to practice with a native speaker. Of course, it is much better to practice with a native speaker. But before that, you can practice by yourself and just write texts, like short scripts about things that you usually you like to talk about, things that you like to do, about your job, about your family, about uh, your next trip, your last trip. Write it down. You, you practice vocabulary, grammar, conjugation, all that, and then practice, rehearse it, really. Like, go in front of the mirror and talk to yourself. I promise that you help when you really need to, to speak, when you have the opportunity to speak with a native, native speaker. Okay, cerca. So this word cerca is actually commonly means a close in Spanish. So be careful with that. I've heard many students that are Spanish speakers that use the word cerca, cerca instead of perto, but the correct word is perto. We use the word cerca in Portuguese in a different context. So we don't use the word cerca to say that something's closed, but we do use in the expression when you mean around. So if you want to mean like, I'll, I'll get there around 10 p.m., I could say, eu vou chegar lá cerca de 10 horas. So cerca in Portuguese means like more or less around. It is not related to, to distance between two things, okay? So we don't use this word in Portuguese to say that something is close to another thing, okay? You can use like when you mean oh, around, more or less. The word próximo 
this is a good example. Prosmo means close as well. So I could say um, prosmo can have different dif different meanings. It could mean the next. For example, uh, see you next week. I'll say vejo você na próxima semana. Próximo mês. So prosmo we have the feminine and masculine word. Próximo mês, next month. Próxima semana, next week. But we could, we could also use the word próximo uh, to refer to a distance between two things. Então, por exemplo, minha, cra, minha casa fica próxima da, do supermercado. But this uses less common. The most common word, the, the word that we use every day is the word perto. So I recommend you use the word perto because it's easier to use and it's more common. Uh, we also could use the word proximo when you are close, getting close to a place. So you're going to a place and you're getting close. You could say, eu estou próximo do meu destino, but you could also use the word perto. I think the word perto is much, much more common to talk about distance between two things than the word proximo, okay? And we don't use the word cerca in this context. I hope this helps, bossa nova. Oh, okay, so Vander, you cannot understand the mechanism. <laughs> it is hard to understand, um, yeah, the Amer the Brazilian series, right? I recommend Coisa Mais Linda. It's easier to understand. Coisa Mais Linda is a, it's a Brazilian show. And I also recommend that I use um, net learning languages with Netflix. It's a free ad. You have to use Google Chrome. It's free and you can install this um, I don't know how they call it, an ad extension, right? You can add it to your Google Chrome and, and watch Netflix with two subtitles. So that can help a lot. So you can use the Brazil Portuguese subtitle and the English subtitle. The subtitles are not perfect, but they help. And I know that Brazilian shows are hard to understand for non-native speakers. Uh, so Maria is saying that you understand me, but you don't understand your friends. I hear this all the time, Maria. It's that that happens because I speak much at a much slower pace and more clearly than most Brazilians. Because I'm a teacher, I know that I have to art articulate well to be understood. Um, and you see that you will, will you will understand well journalists if you watch. Um, Global, or uh, there's a, a very good program that I love. It's called Global Reporter. Global Reporter, and you see that the journalists, when you hear journalists speaking, they speak really clearly because it's their job to have a clear communication, and that's what I do as well because my job is to communicate with you and to help you understand Portuguese, but. Most Brazilians don't do that because that requires training. That's not something easy to do. If, even if you ask your friend, oh, can you please speak a little bit slower, please? It is hard for them to do that because they don't have the training. They are not teachers. But that is totally normal, I think. Uh, don't worry about that. That is totally normal. You will get used to other Brazilians speaking with practice and time. Yes, I have heard, I, my students say, tell me that all the time. I can understand you, but I cannot understand my friends. It's just practice. And also, I usually, I use a more formal standard language and I don't use slang when I speak. And most Brazilians do use like more informal language and slangs. So it, it is tricky. You need time and practice to really understand other people speaking. Hmm. So this is interesting. You know that I'm preparing a video about this that will be published this Tuesday, Margus, about these words. Asima, abaixo, when to use these words, it is complicated, right? So asima means that it's, a, uh, uh, it's not related to something that is on top of something. So in this case, you should say, a lâmpada está pendurada. I think in this case, both would work. So many times these words uh, can be used interchangeably, but sometimes you have to use one or the other. So in this case, you're talking about something that is above. You could say acima or em cima. But in cima is commonly used to talk about some that, something that is placed on top of something else. And acima is something that is a, a, at a, a higher level. 
So it could be a sim or an encima in this case, I would say. Um, pendurada acima da mesa or in cima da mesa. I would say acima because it is not placed on top of the table. Uh, so to me, acima sounds more natural in this case. But if the lamp was on top of the table, like placed on the table, I would say in cima da mesa. Does it make sense? So we also use the word acima, for instance, when you're talking about that it's something that is, um, if you say above zero, acima de zero. So when you're talking about something that is a little bit higher, but not necessarily something that is on top of something else. So watch my video. It will be available on Tuesday about this topic. Oh, time passes so fast. I still have a, 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 I wanted to stay with you just for 30 minutes, but I have so many questions. I'm going to answer a couple of more questions and then I have to go. So question for Marjorie. Yes, in Portugal, they do pronounce the L, I think. Uh, I, they also have different accents, but for, for what I've observed, um, I, they pronounce the L much more clear than Brazilians do. So yes. The accent from Portugal is very different from Brazilians. Muito bom. Excelente. So many good comments. Okay, so Maria, so this is a really long topic, but I have a video about this on my YouTube channel. I recommend that you watch to see all the examples when to use para and por. Uh, para and pra, they're basically, they have the same meaning. Pra is more colloquial, more used in spoken language. Uh, but para and por, they have many different uses. So I recommend you look for this video. It's available on my YouTube channel. Just type on my channel, para, por, speaking Brazilian, and you'll find this video. It's a very complete video on this topic, okay? Okay, guys. Oh, I see so many comments and questions, but I really have to go. If you have... Um, if you don't want to miss my next Q&A, sign up for my newsletter if you have not yet. Uh, so you receive notifications whenever I have a new live class or Q&A. I teach this Q&A once a month on the first Thursday of every month or the second Thursday if, if I'm not available earlier. Thank you so much for joining me today. It was a pleasure to spend time with you today and I will see you again in the next Q&A. Um beijo grande e até a próxima. Tchau, tchau, gente.